Hello, my name is Ron St. Dennis, and I'm an application engineer with Acuity Solutions. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for visiting acuityinc.com. Thanks for checking out our daily blog, and thanks for checking out this video. Since we're getting closer to the halfway mark between the release of NX12 and the release of NX13, I thought that I'd make a short video with the hopes of encouraging those that haven't migrated from NX9, NX10, or NX11 to do so. One of the most common questions that I hear from experienced NXCAD users is, what's new in the NX12 user interface that I'm not familiar with in NX11? Or how long will it take me to recoup what I've lost in productivity while learning the new user interface? Although the overall improvements and enhancements incorporated into NX12 CAD, CAM, and CAE in support of reverse engineering, additive manufacturing, and simulation are huge, and way outside the realm of a short video, my goal here is to convey the idea that NX12 will, if anything, make the experience of NX9, NX10, and NX11 end user more efficient due to the enhancements to the user interface and fundamental workflows that they encounter on a daily basis. In keeping with the ribbon bar design, the NX12 display has been changed to include a tab multi-part display, which is really helpful in practically every facet of design, manufacturing, and simulation, especially when designing or working in the context of an assembly. Uh, here are some of the things that I'll show in the demonstration. Using multiple windows, listing the active and inactive displayed part status, user interface preferences enhancements, dialog rail snap location enhancements, multiple design window enhancements, capturing an image of a graphics window enhancement. Here are the enhancements for the sketching and modeling applications. Create alignment constraints, sketch emphasis, using multiple windows in sketching, print CSIS, combine, and lattice. There's also a, a new add component dialog in assembly and a new application called Digital Mockup that affords a simplified and more efficient tool for displaying and sharing assembly data. All right, let's see if we can demonstrate uh, a few of these uh, enhancements. So the first thing I want to uh, show you a couple of quick things is that <clears throat> this uh, they've uh, changed this uh, fit uh, so that all you got to do is double click any place in the graphics area, uh, and it'll automatically fit up. You don't have to right click and pick fit. You can still do it this way, or you can, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I use Control F all the time. Uh, it's a lot easier here now. You just double click any place in the screen. If you get too close to the part, uh, it won't work. You got to have plenty of screen. <clears throat> That's one thing. The next thing I, that I really like is that uh, when, you, when you select parts either here or in the feature tree, uh, you can select multiple parts, and you can still deselect them with the shift select. But if you select any place in the graphics area, it deselects them all. I, I uh, For me, this is particularly uh, nice because I've, I find myself uh, with my finger on the escape key all the time. So you, uh, since NX12, you really, I rarely uh, use the escape key. So once again, if you uh, click on any of these, you click any place in the graphic area, and it deselects them all. So the next thing, uh, let's uh, look at the uh, multi-tab display. So the nice thing uh, about this is that <clears throat> you can, uh, uh, the first thing you're going to notice about this, let's put it that way, is that you, uh, when you right-click on any component, either here or in the feature tree, you're going to see a couple of things. You're going to see first to make work, make the work part for work in the context assembly. That's all, that hasn't changed. The difference here is that you don't have uh, make the displayed part anymore. Now it's called open in a new window. And so when you select that part and open it in a new window, you got a, you have a, a tab display up here. So you have both parts in, in there tabbed. So let's open a couple more of these. So now, uh, once again, you can just double click in any place in here and it'll fit it up. And so we, now we have three, we have an assembly and three components open. The nice thing about this also is that you can control tab and you get, uh, you can you can jump from one part to the other. So, 
Uh, also, uh, say we have three parts open here. Let's open one more. So now we have four parts open. You can uh, you can right click on any one of these and you have a, another little menu here. You can select a layout and you can put these all in four tab groups like just like this. So now you can still jump from one part to the other with this, make it active with this way. Or you can click on the tab and make it active. Now, <clears throat> that's all fine and good. Uh, but the other thing that's uh, also pretty nice about this is you can uh, you can float any one of these windows. If you grab it up here on the tab, you can move it out here and float it. And you can move you can put multiple parts in here if you want. And you can create this into a split group or a split layout. So, and you can work in any one of these windows at once. Instead of using the window command up here and jumping between windows, here you have it all right here at your uh, uh, at your fingertips. Uh, the other thing that I like, and, and also you can put this right back in here. So now we have everything in the back in the same window, and we can we can we can we can choose the layout here once again. So. The other thing that I like that's a real time saver for me is so you say you have three or four parts open and you want to start closing them. You can go up here, you can click on this little X and it'll automatically close the assembly. You can you can click on any one of these uh, close buttons and it'll close that part. And it'll ask you the appropriate questions. So if you haven't, it'll ask you if you want to close the, the assembly or the assembly and the components. It'll ask you if anything's been modified, it'll ask you if you want to save as well. Or you can just go here over the tab, and if you click the, the middle mouse button, it automatically does the same. So this is a quick way, without having to go up to here and say File, Close, Selected Parts, and selecting them from a list, selecting a level and selecting them from a list, you can do it all right from here. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's look at a couple other... Uh, Things here. So let's uh, let's open up some open up a couple more parts. And let's. Uh, I want to show you uh, very quickly that they've. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wrong place. They've uh, they've added a column here for loaded parts in the loaded parts information screen to tell you what's what's active and what's not active and what's displayed. Uh, so this column is new. Okay, so even though we uh, we do have this part open. We can also make this the work part in the assembly. So you can work on it in either place. This is, <laughs> I find this pretty handy. So you can, uh, you can if you wanted to uh, wave link some geometry from, uh, from a, another component uh, in the assembly, you can do it from this window and you can back here and work in this window. So I find that uh, uh, pretty darn uh, convenient, especially when you got all you do is hit the control tab and switch between one and the other. Or you can you can uh, you can break out the assembly in its own window and work in the uh, in the component window right next to it here. Or you can slide this right into the component. And split out both of these together like this. And then you can select the layout. Oop, grab the wrong component. But uh, it's pretty easy to just move them around. So now you can uh, work on the pork part up here, 
select from here and this is especially ha handy when you have two displays you can uh, you can actually uh, work work on both displays uh, really quite efficiently all right let's talk about some uh, sketch environment enhancements first of all there's a new customer default uh, under the sketching category and first constraints and dimension subcategory and it's right here I've already turned it on here in the interest of time because as you know you, when you when you change a customer default you have to uh, exit uh, NX and come back in for, in order for it to take an effect so what this allows you to do is it allows you to create uh, um, vertical and horizontal uh, inferred alignment constraints as you're constructing geometry in the sketcher so let's just uh, let's just quickly create a new part and we'll just act like we're going to create an extrude and we'll just put a couple circles here because they're the easiest way to demonstrate this and you'll notice right here you'll notice that we have these uh, little horizontal uh, constraints inferred constraints so if we take if we if we grab one of these they're going to stay they're constrained and it's done on the fly so the multi window display also works with the sketcher so uh, and everything you do uh, in one window will be will show up in the other so let's uh, let's open this in a new window and let's go back here uh, yeah that's fine and let's let's make these uh, side by side and so let's uh, let's do an extrude here on this face we'll just create a little let me And you'll see that it's automatically switched. Uh, it's already it's already updated over here. By the way, your 3D uh, connection device uh, uh, will all you got to do is hover to the next window and it becomes active in that window. So it's it's pretty cool. So that uh, that's how it works in uh, in the Sketcher. So the last uh, sketch uh, environment enhancement is uh, called uh, sketch emphasis. So if you're working, uh, if you're sketching in a, uh, in the context of an assembly, and this is your work part, and you're going to, uh, once again, we'll extrude off this face, right? We'll do it in 3D. So you notice that the part is already, uh, uh, dimmed here but if you if you hit the sketch emphasis it dims it even more so now you know exactly which part you're working in all right so let's talk about um, the assembly add component uh, uh, dialog enhancement so the uh, add uh, component dialog is uh, is quite a bit different uh, you'll see that uh, as we go along here uh, that everything is built in integrally right into this uh, one dialog. So when you select your component, uh, the upper half is pretty much the same. You select your component, it's the same. Uh, the placement location, uh, the thing that's different here is that they've, they've made it so that you can create through the product interface, you can create uh, different uh, entities to, uh, to place this part with. So the ni other nice thing I like about this is that you can you can switch between move and constrain right here. So if we just want to place it, we just pick move, put it in here. Like I said, in prior versions, the only place you could place this was based on the uh, absolute uh, coordinate system of the component part. Now we can create a uh, product interface that we can use uh, uh, in in this assembly. So once we get a place there, we can switch to constrain, and we can uh, we can constrain it uh, just like we uh, always have.
Okay, so that's pretty much done. So, with that said, we'll cancel out of that because I want to show you how to uh, how to create a uh, an alternate an alternate anchor point through the product interface. So, if you take if you go into the component that you're uh, that you're going to bring in, and uh, we look at this at the top view, you see not it's not only is it out of position, but it's it's rotated. So, uh, what I've done here is I've already created a datum thesis. Uh, lined up exactly how I want to line up these two holes, and I have a one on the other on the other component. So uh, through the product interface right here in Assembly's product interface, you can you can create a, a, a product interface that would allow you to interface these two parts together. And we're going to use a datum. There's multiple. There's a number of different um, items that you you can use, but we're going to use a datum because that's what we did. Select it. So now it gives you this sort coordinate system datum uh, product interface. So we'll save that part and we'll go back to the first part and now we'll say <clears throat> now we'll say add component we'll pick our, our component and this time now you see that this coordinate system that we created in the product interface because it knows about this part now it knows it's there and it places it. So now uh, one of the options, the assembly location, you can go to, uh, put it the automatically at the um, absolute uh, work part. But we're gonna we're gonna snap it to uh, this. We're gonna snap it right to this. We're gonna try to snap it right to this. We snap it to that, to the uh, the X Y plane of the uh, datum uh, CSIS that I put inside of the uh, component we're assembling to. Say OK. It asks you if you want to fix it, and it's and it's placed. All right, a couple other um, enhanced for, for enhancements for assemblies are uh, if you go into uh, assembly load options, you'll see that uh, that some of these have been combined now in NX12, so that we uh, uh, between fully load, partially load, lightweight, and uh, uh, and uh, regular display. All right, a couple other little things about uh, assembly uh, enhancements. If you go into assembly load options, you'll see that uh, these uh, these uh, loading options are uh, a couple of them are combined, so there's not uh, you don't have one for each of these. And uh, also, if you go into the assembly navigator and you look at the columns, you'll see that there's a new column uh, that you can uh, put in, which is uh, load, load state right here. You can add this to the assembly navigator. And then it tells you, then in the assembly navigator, you can see the load state here. So for those that are partially loaded and fully loaded. There's a brand new application in NX12 uh, called Digital Mockup. What you can do with Digital Mockup is you can create uh, worksheets uh, in an assembly type of file that allows you to display uh, the assembly in different configurations and positions. So you can get there in two ways. You can create uh, from file new. You can uh, There's a DMU tab now. So you can create a DMU sheet from there. Or you can go into uh, the Assemblies tab, and you'll find it right here. Create DMU work set. So, and it's basically put you in the same place. Prompts you for a file. You create a new file, and and it adds a uh, snapshot navigator over here on in the resource bar. <clears throat> so the whole idea of this thing is you can you can you can add products using the uh, uh, the same as the assembly add component. Or you can uh, and you can move uh, you can move products or you can move parts around in in the uh, in in the uh, worksheet. And uh, and then you can create a snapshot. So it gives you these snapshots over here on the side. 
and you can you can you can return to the reset to the design state at any time and you can also snapshot that if you'd like so uh, this is a pretty powerful tool for display purposes uh, especially if you're going to share this uh, uh, with with uh, somebody else for uh, sign offs or uh, uh, even a supplier or a vendor okay another enhancement included within the next 12 uh, is uh, the cre uh, the ability to create a 3d printing uh, coordinate system uh, to be used in additive manufacturing so uh, you'll find that uh, right here under uh, the datums uh, uh, item <clears throat> and it's right here it's called uh, print CSIS. Uh, there's two ways to do it you can let it calculate it but based on the minim minimum height of the part or you can create it uh, you can only have one uh, so you select the body because if you if you make more than one, it's going to tell you that it's uh, it's going to make it just a regular datum CSIS. So it calculates the lowest point and and creates a coordinate system that that can be used um, in uh, 3D printing. So the other uh, and this is just like any other datum CSIS, you can uh, get rid of it and uh, we'll create one uh, quickly as uh, user defined. So say we wanted to put it with this end up. Uh, down. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll select the body. Let's say we'll put it at the center here. <clears throat> we'll rotate this 180 degrees. And we'll say OK. And there's uh, a 3D printing uh, coordinate system there. So I'd like to talk uh, next about a. Uh, a new surface command uh, called combine. You'll find it under uh, the surfacing um, in modeling under surfacing tab, surface tab, under more, under surface operations, combine. So basically, uh, combine is a, a method of uh, uh, connecting or combining uh, sheet bodies, uh, intersecting sheet bodies. And so you can do these. Uh, uh, I found that it helps to uh, select these on the on the side that you want to keep, and so you'll see that uh, that creates a, a one one sheet body, a com a combine it's called. So now uh, let's uh, show another. So now we've uh, we've turned on another one here, and we're gonna we're gonna combine we're gonna combine the combine. And this this body here, and so uh, we'll combine the last combine and this. So now we've got we almost have a volume here. So we've got two more. I've got a top and a bottom here. And if we click on find volume, it gives us an actual uh, combine that has volume. Now there's a, another, uh, you can do this all in one. We can, uh, we can get rid of all of these. And uh, we can turn, we can show all of these and you can actually do this all in one, one step. And uh, so there you have it. We combine just made with a bunch of intersecting sheet bodies. And this is a solid body. Also new in NX12 is a, a new modeling feature uh, called Lattice. Uh, lattices are used in uh, additive manufacturing 3D printing to support uh, the component as it's being printed. So uh, this command is found uh, 
into modeling under the home tab under uh, features and under uh, design feature lattice so what I've done here is I've created this solid body which is uh, the bounding body of what I want where I want to put the lattice this is probably the quickest and easiest way to show this so uh, I'm going to use a unit graph there's two types unit graph and conformal graph and they both have different uh, uh, options so I'm going to select a body that I picked uh, it's going to it's going to uh, automatically uh, figure out a uh, an orientation and then I, I'm going to pick the lattice type now there's uh, quite a few here you can see and they'll display when you hover over them I'm going to pick a hex base and I uh, and then I'm going to show the results so um, there it is basically I'm going to say OK, and you'll see that it creates a feature group and a bunch of faceted convergent bodies. So, uh, <clears throat> and we'll we'll hide uh, we'll hide the extrude that I made, and and this is what it looks like. What I've actually done here is a very simplified version of this uh, because uh, you can this can be very complex, and uh, you can trim it to surfaces. Uh, and remove uh, areas. So that's all I have for now. I hope that you found this uh, video uh, helpful and that uh, you decide to upgrade to NX12. Thanks for visiting AcuityInc.com and thanks for watching the video.